Hey MSM, my name is Ethan, part of the 5th through 8th team. Um, just coming off of the Super Bowl, I had this thought of rivalries. We were watching the game and obviously passes are caught, touchdowns are scored, field goals are scored, interceptions, those kinds of things. And throughout the game, you're like, ah oh, man, I wish you would have caught that. Or like, oh, he got sacked again or, or whatever it was. Um, and my five-year-old, Theodore, kind of caught on and was like, well, who are we wanting to win? I didn't really care. Um, uh, I didn't really, I just wanted a good game, but my dad wanted the 49ers to win. And so my dad said, the 49ers. And then my son said, well, well, why do we want the Chiefs to lose? And I was kind of caught back. I thought it was a good question. It was kind of like, yeah, that's true. Like when you kind of want one team to win, you're kind of essentially saying that you want the other team to lose. And it kind of created this idea of like this rivalry aspect. And now I know the Chiefs and 49ers aren't technically rivals, those kinds of things. But I mean, we all kind of have different camps that we sit in and we may, may not necessarily say this, but like we don't like that other camp, right? And you can think of like Apple versus Android, or you can think of Coke versus Dr. Pepper or country music versus pop. Um, you can think of so many different things, whether it's like softball versus baseball or um, volleyball versus tennis or, or whatever it is. But oftentimes there's these different camps that we can sit in. And the reason why I bring that up is one of the themes and one of the goals that we had for us as MSM West Campus in going through the book of Ephesians is that despite our differences, we would be one in Christ. So despite our differences, we would be one in Christ. There's so much out there that can differentiate, that can make us different from one another. But we are going to choose to be one in Christ. And so we're going to look at Ephesians chapter 2, 11 through 22, and Paul is going to bring up some tension, maybe some rivalry stuff, and then help us understand how we can be one in Him. Okay, um, so let's go ahead and turn to, if you don't have your Bibles, Ephesians chapter 2. Let's go ahead and look at verse 12. Look at verse 12. It says, Remember that you were at the time separated from Christ, alienated from the commonwealth of Israel, and strangers to the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. This sounds a lot like um, uh, the beginning of Ephesians 1 through 10, right? Just kind of some bleak hope. Um, but what we see here is that we are one in alienation, that we are one in alienation, that we're all alienated. They were all like strangers, foreigners, far from God, which we'll talk about in a second. Right? Paul is saying that, um, that no one starts out good with God, especially Gentiles. And what I mean by that is that we weren't originally a part of the plan, right? We talked about this um, a couple weeks ago, but God chose a man named Abram, which would become Abraham. And it was through his kids and generations through him that would essentially be God's people that he would bring about God's reconciliation and redemption to the world. It was through those people. And then when Jesus came, he then brought in the Gentiles. You and me brought us in. So it's only by God's good grace that we are part of the plan now. But he's bringing up this tension of Jew versus Gentile. Right? The Jews think that the Gentiles don't belong. The Gentiles may not understand that it's actually not about them. And so there's this rivalry and tension, but they are both one in that regardless of who you are, we were alienated. And so not only were we alienated, but also, which kind of mimics chapter, or verses 1 through 10, that we are also one in reconciliation. So look at verse 13 and 14. It says, But now Christ Jesus who once were far off, have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he himself is our peace, who has made us both one. So Paul is saying that um, regardless of whether you like Coke or Dr. Pepper, that you both like soda. Whether you rooted for the 49ers or the Chiefs, you both like football, right? And so it doesn't matter if you were really far off. It doesn't matter really where you came from, but we were all sinners in need of a Savior. And now we can be one in Christ. That is our common denominator. That is what unifies us. And this is what being uni um, united together at MSM West, and this is what it means, all different backgrounds, no matter what is different in your life or, or what school you go to, it doesn't matter what sport you play, is that this is what unites us. And so we're all one in alienation. We are all one in reconciliation. Um, and then we're all one in new identification. Okay, so look at verse 19. It says, So then, right, after those two things, so then you are no longer strangers, no, no longer aliens, 
but you are fellow citizens with the saints, and you are members of the household of God. I love the new titles that we have there. Citizens, saints, essentially family members. And in short, in short, um, you need to understand that we should act one in Christ as a family, as a family of faith. And that's how we should interact with one another. That's how we should love one another. You know, one time I was, um, my brother was driving me home from school. Um, he's two years older than me. And he had some friends in the car, um, and they were kind of like poking fun at me, kind of making fun. I was sitting in the back seat, kind of like, ah, I don't know what to say, or older, or whatever. Um, and my brother saw that I was like getting embarrassed, and he told him to stop. He's like, hey, y'all quit it, knock it off, like, let be done with that. Um, and essentially what he was saying was like, only I, as his older brother, can make fun of him, okay? Uh, but I felt as though, right, my brother had my back. That regardless of, does family members sometimes annoy you? Yes. Do family members fight? Yes. But does family know that they love you no matter what? Hopefully you've experienced that in your own life. And if you haven't, you can experience it here in the uh, family of faith. And so that's what we need to do. So as you look around your small group, think about, would, would they say the same thing about you? That no matter how different you are, that you still love them. That no matter what they choose to do versus what you choose to do or the different backgrounds or, or moms and dads or go to school or where you live or all those kinds of things, no matter that, you still have their back and you still love them and you are one in Christ. Because if that's not true, what that should point out in your life is that you have something or someone that is more important than your faith in Christ. More important than being united one in Him. And so what you have to do is reorder your life and move that around to where your faith comes first, because that is what is, can be the most unifying thing for us at MSM West. Hope this um, helps with some good conversation. Um, I just want you to remember that despite our differences, let's be one in Christ. MSM, love you guys. Bye.